Hello and Happy New Year. I missed you guys. It's the Sunday Sipper Club. Welcome back. I hope you guys had a great holiday. Um, the last time we were together, we were chatting in December with Maureen Downey about fake wines. <laughs> fake news, fake wines. Um, so I hope you had a terrific holiday. I am going to refresh my browser here, bring the mic over so that you can hear me. Um, but we're going to talk about the exciting lineup for the Sunday Sipper Club tonight. And I'm going to make sure we're broadcasting live. Um, I believe I saw the thing go live, which is always good. Hopefully you can hear and see me just fine. And we'll see who's here. Who's turning tuning in early. I've got a nice crisp, fresh white. So let me go over to... We've already got lots of folks here. Okay. So let me mute myself so you don't hear me twice. You don't need to hear me twice. <laughs> okay, so Paul and Patty Hollander are here from Virginia. Dave Head is here from Corkstown, Ontario. Lori Sweet in Kingston. We got Jason Davies over in the UK who's so dedicated because it's midnight his time. Um, and who else do we have here? We've got Rochelle O'Connor, Linda White Alexandra, Alexander. Dave Gardner's here, Darren Berry is here, Anne McLean is here, and Jane Staples is here. All right. Okay, what's in your glass and where are you logging in from, folks? Hello, hello, hello to you all. Happy New Year. Did you have a good holiday? I hope so. Um, I've got a nice, crisp, fresh white wine here, a Chenin Blanc from South Africa. All right. Oh, you guys are all coming in nice and quickly here. Good evening to you all, Darren and Anne and Linda. All right. Peter Nielsen's here. I love this. I missed you guys. I missed you. I really did. <laughs> uh, I had a great holiday with friends and family. Uh, my mom, Anne McLean, who's here online tonight, came up from Nova Scotia. My son, Ryan, was home from university. He's in Waterloo studying electrical engineering. So he came home here to Ottawa and we just had a lovely Christmas. Um, we really did. We enjoyed ourselves. It gave me lots of time to think about everything. I'm going to share some of those thoughts with you tonight. Uh, Beverly is here from Southern California. Oh, she says, missed you too. Um, and Jason is drinking a Roussin from South Africa. So we are uh, glass soulmates tonight, Jason, because I've got a Chenin Blanc. I love it. Which one have you got there, Jason, the Roussin? I'm just going to take a moment to sniff and sip. Mm. That is so good. Linda's drinking a nice French red. Which one? I would love to know. Okay. Um, so, Lori is still sipping on her Marsan from earlier. We had, of course, a private wine tasting in the private Facebook group for course members of Get Wine Smart and the new wine and cheese pairing course, which is so much fun. I am so enjoying those courses. Loving those. So that's what I do every every Sunday at 5 p.m. before I jump on here is I'm with my private Facebook group members, course members, to lead them through a guided tasting. Uh, let's see, who else is here? Ron Bach is here from Elmira, and he's drinking a Shiraz Cabernet Sauvignon. I would love to know which one, uh, Ron, and uh, what's the label? Where is it from? Paul Hollander is enjoying a 2016 Garçon Tenat Reserve. Tanat, as we now know from Dr. Edward Miller, one of our guests, is one of the healthier wines you can drink because it, the Tanat has a lot of tannins. Tanat, tannin, Tanat, it's the grape, which has some of those health promoting qualities, of course, in moderation, right? Don is here. Kim Sagan is here. Excellent. Uh, oh, Jason, it's the Bellingham. Great wine, great wine from South Africa. And Darren is still sipping his Chardonnay Mousquet from our course session earlier this evening. Mousquet is beautiful wine, as we were talking about. He's got the Marianissen from Ni Niagara, but in our course, we were drinking the Cave Spring Chardonnay Mousquet. It just opened people's eyes and went, whoa, what's this? It was so good. It's like a clonal variation of Chardonnay, it, and it has the Muscat or Mousquet um, aromas like the sort of clementine honeysuckle but not cloyingly sweet it's it's a mind blower you've got to try it if you haven't tried chardonnay musquet patty wright is here patty hollander 
Gus Clemens is here from Texas. Gus, I got your lovely email. I am so backlogged, but that's no excuse. I loved your email. I read it, I read it twice. And you know what? It was so special. <laughs> I put it aside to respond when I had time to respond properly. And of course, that ends up in a folder that you don't get to. <sighs> anyway, Gus, thank you so much for that email. Um, Rick Del uh, Delderis is here. Hello, Rick. And Anne Bedard is logging in from Panama. Anne is moving to Portugal soon. Anne used to own a winery in Sonoma. Linda is drinking Lake Champlain, New York wine. Ron Bach says his wine is one he made himself. Well, now, aren't you talented? That's great, Ron. Um, and Jason says his wine is an everyday drinking wine. Okay, wow. Okay, uh, Rick is uh, tuning in from Los Gatos. What are you drinking, Rick? If anything yet, I know it's three hours earlier there for you. Peter says, still enjoying my Vino Verde here from our course earlier this evening. What an enjoyable wine. My daughter was dead on when she said, when she was in Portugal in November and went on and on about this Veritol. Yes, uh, it's from the northern region of Portugal. Beautiful wine. Guyan is here for the first time on the Sunday Sipper Club. Guyan is a new course member for the Wine and Cheese course. Guyan, I'm so glad you're joining us. I think you'll find these Sunday Sipper Club shows a great supplement to your learning. Always really interesting people. Um, I know you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> Gus, thank you. I'm glad. Thank you for your understanding. You know, it's the irony of like, oh, this is such a special note. And then you just don't get to it because you want to have a special, special response. And it's like, oh, what did I do? Yeah. Um, Sam, hello, Sam from BC. Can't stay long. Soon off to the Pacific Breeze Winery. Case sale on today. All right. Sam teaches wine courses in Vancouver. Lovely. Jane is here from Ottawa enjoying and enjoying the Honoro Vero. Jane, I had that wine as part of my cheese and wine course this past Wednesday. It's such a great wine for cheese. Um, Lise Charest is here from Northern Ontario. Hello, Lise. Happy New Year to you. Wow, I'm just uh, spending this first bit welcoming everybody back. It's like old home week. I'm going to take another sip of my Chenin Blanc from South Africa. Mm. So nice. Rick Delderis is drinking the Bois de Menage Gigandas from the Rhone Valley. All right, 2016. Okay, guys. So I wanted to share a bunch of things. I'm here um, on my own tonight uh, deliberately because I wanted to give you the lineup for 2019. Um, I've been furiously booking guests over the holidays, thinking about who's going to tell the best stories, who's going to entertain you the most who's going to, while they're entertaining, educate you. No education can happen if we're not interested, if we're bored, whatever. It's only, I think, when we're laughing and um, being wrapped up in a story that we actually remember and retain uh, points, learning points. I'm sure Sam will support me in that. Rochelle is sipping on a glass of cava, Spanish sparkling wine, celebrating finally finished getting through, <laughs> getting all my decorations put away. Really enjoying this time on Sunday. That's lovely, Rochelle. Uh, Lee says, hello, Miss Natalie, just sitting by the fire with her wiener dogs. She has adorable dogs. Jim Clark, hello, happy new year to you too, Jim from Canada. Jane, cheese and seafood, two of my favorite things to eat. Amen. Linda says, drinking Le Sonali's Rouge Sec. Okay, interesting. I haven't tried that one. It's great, she says. And Gwen Barton has joined us here from Ottawa. Margaret Hawthorne is in the house. Hello, Margaret. What do you all, what do you have in your glasses? All right. So let me first tell you about some of the guests I have lined up for you. Okay. I'm going to um, put you on to some pretty slides while I read my notes because all I'll be doing is looking down here. Um, so you can enjoy some lovely, hopefully the sound will still work and all that. So <laughs> I'm getting lots of hearts and thumbs up, feeling very, very validated. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Ooh, explosion of thumbs. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, guys. Okay. Let me put this on here. Beautiful scenes for you to look at as I tell you about the guests. 
So again, do let me know if when the slides are up, you can't hear me. Okay. Otherwise I'm just going to go on and on talking to myself here. So I'm going to put the slides back so you can be visually entertained while I tell you about the upcoming guests. All right. Deal. Deal. Okay. Oh, Darren, we missed you over the holidays. Thank you. I missed you too. Ah, Margaret Hawthorne is Lori Kilmartin's cousin. We have not seen each other for years, but we share a love of wine. I love when you all can reconnect here. Lori Sweet, enjoying Monte del Fra Mezzo Volpolicello Rapasso Classico from Italy, 2015. That's a mouthful. It sure is. Elaine Bruce is here from Calgary. Welcome, Elaine. Okay, let me get to these Facebook folks. So, um, next, let's see, what is this? This is the 13th. Okay, so on January 27th, two weeks from now, we're going to have Stephanie Pichet. She has a marvelous podcast and blog um, called Flying for Flavor. She's a trained chef, but also she's got her chops in wine. I forget what designation she's up to um, in the wine training, but we'll we'll get to all of that. But she is so lively. She has a great, as I mentioned, podcast. We're going to be talking about her wine stories and travels around the world and the wonderful wines that she has tried over the years. So she's from Northern Ontario. Lise, I believe she's in your neighborhood. Um, so you'll want to check out her website, which is stephaniepichet.com or .ca. Let me just, yeah, .ca. Stephanie Pichet, P-I-C-H-E dot C-A. Um, then we've got Christy Canterbury from New York, who is a wine writer for Forbes magazine. She's a competition judge, frequent speaker, uh, she's got so many really great stories. I, I'm looking for storytellers. I really am focused on that this year. So you'll find in the mix, I've got a lot of writers um, for that storytelling aspect. I am happy to have more winemakers on this show and we'll line them up as they appear on my radar, but they have to be able to tell a very good story. Um and Paul Hollander says, here's you fine with the, fl okay, so you can hear me great. And Dave Head has opened the Terra Vista Viognier. Woo! Oh, Elaine is still vacationing in Mexico. Lovely Elaine. Calgary is her home. Then after Christy Canterbury, who is a master of wine, by the way. So talk about wine chops, plus the Forbes writer. We've got Esther Mobley. She is the regular wine columnist for the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, she also um, has worked in the past at Wine Spectator magazine. And um, wow, she has, you know, um, got so many stories being right in the San Francisco area, an hour's drive from Napa. But of course, she writes about wines from around the world. Then we've got Jill Barth, who is another Forbes writer takes a different tact from um, Christy. Um, oh, actually, Christy is not Forbes. She is other magazines. So Jill is our Forbes magazine writer. I'm mixing them up because I've booked so many of them over the holidays. But you're going to find lots of great stories from both of those women. Then we've got Rajat Parr, who is a master sommelier. And he has worked at some of the most famous restaurants in California. He's a three-time James Beard award-winning author, sommelier, winemaker. And his new book is The Sommelier's Atlas of Taste, which he takes a fresh take on blind tasting region by region. Um, spectacular, very successful uh, person in terms of, you know, his, his sommelier credentials and others. Then I'm going to come back to you now just to say, hello, I'm still here, <laughs> but I'm still reading off my notes. We've got Suzanne Mustachich, who has written the book Thirsty Dragon, China's Lust for Bordeaux and the Threat to the World's Best Wines. So she's got a completely different um, take on wine. And I'm, I'm really intrigued with what's going on in China with wine, not only the wines they're producing, but how the Chinese market is really driving up the prices of Bordeaux and other fine wines. So we're going to dive into it with her. Then we have Jeff Cruth, 
who um, has the Guild of Sommeliers podcast. He's also a master psalm, has been involved with the Court of Master Sommeliers, has been on the psalm documentaries, uh, real live wire, great stories to tell. He also makes his own wine. And also, if that weren't enough, we've got Karen McNeil, who published the Wine Bible. Um, people often mix me up with her. I don't know why. I guess because we've got Scottish last names and we're both wine writers and we're women. So I guess it's hard to tell us apart. But this woman is remarkable. So she's based right in the heart of Napa Valley. And um, her book, The Wine Bible, I think is the best selling wine book ever. Pretty sure. And uh, she is a former wine correspondent for the T Today Show first wine editor for USA Today, the newspaper, and it goes on and on. She's contributed to more than 50 newspapers and magazines, including the New York Times, Town and & Country, and Worth. Um, she teaches now at the CIA, which is not for spies, it's for wine folks, the Culinary Institute of America in the heart of Napa Valley. She teaches the wine courses there. So an amazing lineup, right? Look at that. Just our first eight to 10 people. Oh, I should mention Elizabeth Snyder as well, who does one of the most popular wine podcasts, Wine for Normal People. <laughs> uh, she'll be here with us as well. Oh, I need to take a break and check your comments. Okay, so Elaine Bruce is having a lovely rosé that's Mexican, where she is. Lise Charest says, lots of ladies in that lineup. You betcha, Lise. There's, yeah, I wasn't... Uh, yeah, there's only two men there. <laughs> Elaine says, yay for the women of wine. Rajat Parr, Peter Nielsen says, yes. Lise, I have the wine Bible. It's huge. Beverly, I have the wine Bible. Uh, Lane says, I too, too. It weighs a ton. Uh, Lori says, I have Karen's book, also her calendar on my desk. Every day is an interesting wine fact. Isn't she great? Totally awesome. Time for now for another sip of the Shannon Bloom. Hmm, tell me what's in your glass if you haven't told me, or what you plan to have in your glass. Hmm. <sighs> nice. So, a couple of things before I talk more about the Sunday Sipper Club. Deb is here from Vancouver. Hello, Deb. Um, yes, all noted win women, Linda. So, the podcast, I, I launched a podcast in December called Unreserved Wine Talk, and it is going gangbusters. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better response from those who are listening and reviewed it, from the number of uh, listeners is incredible. It's just blowing me away. Apple featured it and is still featuring it under New and Noteworthy, under the best of 2018. Um, it's been steadily in the chart top charts for uh, food and wine or food and drink podcasts so it's in there um, not to be braggy boots this is all about you if you're listening to that podcast it wouldn't happen without you as listeners um, but with Jamie Oliver and America's Test Kitchen and um, Giada and all the rest of them it's the only drink podcast as far as I can tell, that's been in the top 10 and it's been holding. So I've loved it. Um, and I publish it every Wednesday and you can find it on my website at nataliemcleancom forward slash podcast. Or if you want to subscribe and not miss an episode, it's free. nataliemcleancom forward slash subscribe. So you can get it on Apple and Spotify and Google Podcasts and Android devices soon, Alexa via iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Sirius, Alexa just woke up, she hurt me, um, my smart speaker, oh, okay, yeah, shh, good night, uh. <laughs> um, Jay Black is here, hello, Jay, so I, I encourage you to subscribe because what I'm doing is taking the best of these Sunday Sipper Club interviews with guests, editing them for audio so you don't hear, hi, so-and-so, hi, so-and-so. You just hear the core of the interview, but you can play it when you're on your commute to work, walking the dog or the gerbil, as I've said in the past, or doing something else. And again, it's that layering of learning. You know, you might have heard it here, you might be sipping wine, but listen to it again fresh. But it's not just 
these interviews. Every second episode, I go solo in a confessional episode. Yes, wine confessions. You bet. And I'm admitting things that I've never admitted before about wine and me. <laughs> um, from, you know, worrying about drinking wine, drinking too much, to um, the episode I'm working on now is my favorite wine women on TV. Alicia Florick, The Good Wife. Olivia Pope in Scandal. And it's all about them and the way they use wine or the, I guess, Shonda Rhimes and the producers use wine to signal their inner weather, their inner turmoil. I love it. Anyway. Um, okay. Yes. Lori, thank you for reminding me. There are snippets of the podcast on Instagram, also Facebook and Twitter. So I've, I've been posting snippets and, and Lori has been a big help with that. Um, you can catch little snippets like about a minute long. You can get a little taste of what's on the podcast. So watch for those, but just subscribe. It's free. Um, and then get, get all of the episodes on your favorite podcast player. So if you use podcast apps like, I don't know, Castro or Apple's or Pocket Casts or Overcast, there's so many podcast apps. It's on all of them. All right. Jim Clark felt the pressure to go get a class. The 2016 Wakefield Cabernet Sauvignon. Good man. All right, Jim. Paul, uh, our Alexa too. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, she activates on anything. I've got to not say. I've been, I've been taking to calling her Madam A. I've got to remember that. Peter says, love your podcast. Look forward every week. Thank you, Peter. Um, Okay, let me scroll down here. Uh, Bev has the 2014 Clos de Bois Malbec from the Alexander Valley in Geyserville, California. So good. Deb is drinking Eau Vivre. Ah, Budenfall. That is a BC wine that I should know. Tell me more about that one, uh, Deb. I haven't got to that. I, I'm sure I got the sample, but I have not done that. J. Jay Black says, Happy New Year, Natalie, and all wine friends. So good to be back at the table together, isn't it? Um, John Miller, do you plan to bring anyone from boutique wine areas such as Michigan, Virginia, New York, or Ontario? Well, I, I, I'm very familiar with the wineries in Ontario, John, so yes. And in the past, we've had um, Thomas Balchelder, Balchelder, Batchelder, Batchelder. He's such a good good interview. So look for that because you can always get um, these interviews. I have a back catalog on my site. Lori, if you know where all of these, the nataliemcclain.com, I think it's forward slash blog forward slash videos. If you could post that link here in the chat, I'd really appreciate it because John, you can go back and listen to those interviews. I've had a number of Ontario winemakers because that's where I'm based. Um, Paul, uh, or sorry, um, wait a minute, Paul Speck from Henry of Pelham, uh, others that are, are not all top of mind. But if you want me to interview winemakers from Michigan, Virginia, and New York, tell me, put the names in the chat. But most importantly, it's not just that they can make good wine, but they can tell a good story. They're interesting, they're vibrant, they're charismatic, they've got to keep us awake and entertain us while they're talking about their wines, but also winemaking, wine culture, and so on. So John, I welcome those suggestions. Lee Chere says, inner turmoil. Well, yes, that would be interesting for all of us. Love it. So subscribe to the podcast, please. Don't miss an episode. Elaine is drinking Rivero Gonzalez Rosado, 2017. Guyane says, do you have Catherine Langlois from Sandbanks Winery? That's a good suggestion. From Picton, she's suggesting. Yeah, it's a beautiful winery. As is this Shannon from Pavillon from South Africa. All right, so um, I did a lot of thinking over the holidays, and I wanted to share that with you tonight because you are my peeps, my family. I love these sessions. I had to think about 2019 and really to get a little bit heart to heart here. What is my greatest good? How can I make the most contribution with the talents I have with you? How can I be of greatest service? 
So the two things, the two pillars in my life, one is teaching, and that's from my mother, Anne McLean, uh, who is here tonight. Thank you, mommy. Um, and I do that through my courses. I have loved, love, love, love teaching my courses. I'm doing one live right now on cheese and wine. And a number of you are here tonight who are in that course. And then I've done one with Get Wine Smart, uh, several iterations of that. And I am going to revise those courses and make them even better in 2019. I'm going to divide them up. So Get Wine Smart, for example, is five modules, major modules. And it's my flagship course. So it is regular 497 but I'm going to divide up the module. So one module will be on food and wine pairing only. And um, I will offer a special price of $97. But the more important thing is not about the money, but about revising these courses to make them more modular and to make them even better so that you can pick and choose how you want to learn about wine in addition, of course, to the Sunday Sipper Club. But that is my goal, to really refine those courses for existing students and make them the best possible and also for new students. So that's one of my big goals. Thank you, Lori, for posting that, um, that link. Um, and the other goal, huge goal for me in 2019 is to write my third book. So some of you know I've written two books with Random House. The first was Red, White, and Drunk All Over, a wine-soaked journey from grape to glass. Yes, I take my subject very seriously. Um, but it was it was filled with stories of wacky winemakers, but nestled into the stories was the learning. So you learned how to decant a wine. You learned about food and wine pairing and so on. My second book was very much the same format called Unquenchable, um, a tipsy search for the world's best bargain wines. Again, wine stories from around the world. My third one will be quite different. It's about social media, my personal experiences with wine. Not quite a memoir, but a year in the life of what I experienced. I've got the title, can't reveal it, but I need the space to write about it, to, to actually get to it. I've had so many requests. Thankfully, I mean, I'm really appreciative of how many people have asked me, when are you doing your writing your third book? And if I think about my highest good, my greatest contribution, it's writing. Writing extends itself into the courses I teach, but writing books is what I was put on this planet to do. And, you know, I, I've referenced this previously, but in that movie, Chariots of Fire, uh, the main character says, he's a, he's a runner, he says... God made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. You know, well, God or the cosmos or whatever you want to call it gave me the ability to write, to write, and when I write, I feel that pleasure, that flow state, you know, when you get in the zone, and I need to be there more often, and I need to, to get her done. <laughs> I need to get this book done. So um, that's one of my big goals for 2019. Thank you, Beverly. I'm, I'm delighted you have both books. Um, so to do that, to refine the courses and make them better, make them more accessible, even for those of you who haven't taken them, to offer smaller slivers that target exactly what you want to learn, but also just to get to this larger project of the book that I've put off for a couple of years. I need to make room. Something has to give because <laughs> right now, I don't know if you know this, and this is not moaning, but every sipper, Sunday Sipper Club with a guest takes 12 hours. I added it up over the holidays. So it's not just the hour I spend with the guest, of course. It's um, the half an hour to sometimes an hour we spend doing tech tests, technical tests, getting them ready with their their microphone, their earbuds, getting their photos to break up this discussion, getting their bios, creating the blog post, researching them, finding them in the first place, booking them, making sure I've developed all the questions for them, um, and on and on, the prizes and, and so on. So, um, so I, I don't begrudge it at all, but it just takes a significant amount of time. 
So I definitely want to keep doing this because I think it's part of my calling, but I need to make space for the book. So let me just, uh, before I go to um, what I'm going to say here, Lise, it's enlightening when you hear about someone doing something they love. Fantastic, Natalie. Thank you, Lise. Love it. Deb, yep, then time goes by and you never, ever notice it. So glad you're doing that. Thank you, Deb. Deb is another one of my right-hand women. <laughs> Not that I have a whole cadre, but Deb is essential in helping me with the wine reviews. Guyanne, very happy you are planning your third book. Can't wait to read it. All right. Bev says, looking forward to reading your third book. Peter says, uh, just bought, the, uh, my wife just brought in the two books recently from the mail books. The Wine Lover's Daughter, yes, that's by Ann Fadiman and Red, White, and Drunk All Over. Now I'll make time to read them. Great, Peter. Dave says, winemaker, oh, winemaker suggestion, Randall Graham. I have interviewed him, Dave, so you need to go back in the archives. And that was a fantastic interview. So I have. He is great. That's the kind of winemaker I want to interview. Jim Clark, <laughs> Jim Clark, let's pl play Guess the Wine Book title game. Online on wine. Nope. <laughs> Keep guessing. James Norton has joined us. Elaine, I definitely, it's definitely your calling. Thank you. All right, Alan, you are the bomb. Delighted to see you are so inspired and inspiring. Thank you. All right, so guys, I'm going to be honing in those wine courses. I'm still going to be doing the Sunday Sipper Club. I want to write a book. Something has to give. I have to sleep. <laughs> so I'm going to move to a bi-weekly Sunday Sipper Club. So every two weeks, all of those guests I outlined, our next one will be on January 27th. So that's what I'm doing because I'm not giving this up by a long shot. But given the amount of time it takes to do each one and given that I really need to get to this writing this third book, that's the plan I've come up with. I could give up, I guess, sleeping, but <laughs> I, um, you know, need sleep, need food. Um, so uh, that's my plan. And I wanted to share that with you. So I hope you feel that it's a an increase in the long term in your wine pleasure um, because I I don't have an intention of taking away but yes I'm only one person with so many hours in the week so I want to open up every second Sunday to really dig into that book plus I'll be of course working on it at other times but I also run a business full-time right website mobile apps wine reviews, all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, that's my intention. And I wanted to share that with you. I want to keep up with the podcast because I feel a deep connection there and it's making me write. I love that too. So, you know, many, uh, many irons in the fire as always. I'm a person with, if you think about a web browser with 36 tabs open, I always have like too many tabs open, but it's kind of the way I do it. But when I'm most successful in the sense of being of the greatest service, I reduce those tabs and I focus and I dig down and I get it done, get her done. So thank you for the hearts and the oh, feeling very validated <laughs> and the thumbs up. All right. Good, good, good. Uh, Darren says, bon chance. Thank you. I plan on reading Red, White and Drunk all over when I take it with me to Mexico in a couple of weeks. Hey, Darren, you should ask Elaine Bruce. She's in Mexico for her recommendations. Not sure if he'll be in the same region. Just so you know, Red, White, and Drunk All Over is on audiobook now through Audible, Amazon, iTunes. So if you're a listener, or if you like to listen in the car or whatever, it's available in that format too. I'm going to record Unquenchable maybe toward the end of this year. I need to write this third book first. Uh, Elaine, I have both your books. Unquenchable was stolen and you graciously sent me another. Oh, wow. I forgot that. You never know the connections you make, eh, Elaine? Huh. Jay says, great, great idea. Thank you. Linda, great plan, Natalie. And I'm sure we all support you to pursue what you love. <laughs> Alan. Elaine. And national TV, too. Yeah, yeah. And I still got to do the TV thing. The reason I do the TV is not pure vanity, okay? Just so you know. <laughs> I have fun on those. And I love performance because I was a Highland dancer. But I like to keep my foot in the door with those stations like the social CTV and global 
for when I have a new book, right? If you're the regular columnist expert and you've got a regular spot, it's so much easier. So I do those. I recognize the time it takes with those things because I have to fly to Toronto. You're on for five to eight minutes and then it's done. But it does have a big impact. It really does. So I keep it up. Uh, Lori Sweet says, follow your passion. <laughs> Deb says, clone yourself because you need sleep. Yes, like Chardonnay Muske. I'll develop a clone. Nat Muske. <laughs> Sweeter than me. Not as bitter or acidic. Don says, a great audiobook. Thank you, Don. Um, Jay, no unique people like this should not be a clone. <laughs> okay, this doesn't have to be a love fest, though I like it. Uh, title, Earth, Wine, and Terroir. Oh, that's interesting. Like it. It's not it. I've got my title. But, um, Lee Shere, what good bubbles were opened for New Year's? I need to know. Okay, so, back to wine. Yes, although it always has been about wine. Um, I love the Henry of Pelham, Catherine Cuvet, and the Rosé version. What else? I love so many bubbles. Um, Blue Mountain, if you're in BC. Um, Benjamin Bridge, if you're in Nova Scotia. Now, I don't want to ignore my American friends. Carneros, uh, Domaine Carneros. Um, oh my gosh, there's just so many. Of course, you can go Champagne, but that tends to be really pricey. You got your dependables like Veuve Clicquot, Bollinger. I love rosé, though. Rosé sparkling lately. If you want to go budget but not give up taste, Segura from Spain, a cava. Segura, that was the bomb in our wine and cheese course. We just love that. It was It's $13.95, Lee's. It's amazing. Prosecco, of course. Santa Margarita. They've got a new rosé. All kinds. And put in, in the comments, guys. Add your own recommendations. Claire, and we love to see you on TV, too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that is so good, Deb says. Um, had it in Canadian wine. Oh, the Catherine Cuvet. Yes. Going back to Deb's earlier comment here, because I was yabbering on about life plans. Um, she's drinking a Butterful wine. That's the name of it, right? You're just not making up that word. Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauve, Malbec, Merlot, Petit Verdot from BC, medium dry bodied, raspberry plum, red blackberry fine tannins, lingering dark berry, I love that, lingering dark berry flavors, and a bit of a bite at the end. But that could be because I didn't decant it long enough. Great, great tasting note, Deb. Okay. Alan, you give us so much, we... Oh, you more than bi-weekly. You're so accessible, so giving, and many miles before you sleep. This might be your best online show yet. Don't make me cry, okay? I'm not weepy. I'm Scottish. I'm not huggy. <laughs> I'm not emotional. <laughs> okay. Whew. Lise, I need to stock up on my bubbles for hot tub nights. Okay, good. Darren, Lise, looking at some sparkling Vouvray made from Chenin Blanc. A beautiful sparkling Chenin, yes, from the Loire Valley. Uh, Guyane says she's trying the Cremant d'Alsace of Bourgogne. Yes, that's a great wine. Pierre Spar is terrific. Yeah, Lise loves it too. My Chenin from South Africa. If you haven't tried Chenin Blanc from South Africa and from the Loire Valley, it's a treat. You're in for a treat. Lanolin, beeswax lemon mm. oh, pairs with good wine confessions <laughs> all right so folks oh i have to tell you about winners from last week before i forget that so not last week in december we interviewed maureen downey if you recall from she's known as the wine detective She's got this big uh, company, not big company, but a very boutique specialized company in California that detects wine fakes. And she's using blockchain technology in a really innovative way. And so um, it was such a good discussion. She offered two prizes. One is a year-long subscription to her wine site that helps you detect wine frauds and fakes called winefraud.com. And the other is a couple of presentations in the full slide decks uh, for seminars she's going to be delivering in New York in March. So if you're in the New York area and you're interested in this topic, 
go check out winefraud.com as her events are there. So um, the presentations and the membership, they're both worth like thousands of dollars. And she generously offered those two prizes. So I do want to let you know the winners. So one, I think one of the two people is online tonight. I believe Sam Hawk is here from BC, Vancouver, who teaches. Oh, he had to leave early. Sam, but you'll find out. You are one of the winners of the, the slide decks. And then it was, um, oh dear, <laughs> I just forgot. Um, she's from San Diego. It's Colleen. Oh dear. Mm -mm -mm. I had it in mind, but I've had too many facts in my mind since. Colleen Darcy, I believe. I'm going to post this in the comments below, but I know she's not online tonight, but she did share and like the video. Um, and if you, sh I haven't promoted this tonight, but if you share and like this video, um, I'll give away a copy of uh, Red, White and Drunk all over next week, or sorry, on the 27th, right? That's when we regroup. Okay, cool. Um, yes, Lori, that was a fa fascinating talk with Maureen Downey. Um, yeah, Paul, not last week, last year. Deb says, it's amazing how sh uh, different the Shannon from the Loire is from the South Africa. You'd hardly believe it was the same grape at times. Yes, love Shannon B from both regions. You are so right, Deb. All right, guys, we are at quarter to the hour. I didn't believe I could talk that much in that long. <laughs> But there you go. I guess I'm chatty Kathy when I want to be. Even an introvert can keep it going. Thank you so much for being with me. Um, we've done more than 85 shows now of this Sunday Sipper Club. Lori has posted the link where you can find all of the back shows, the back catalog. I'm looking forward to 2019, to really digging into some interesting guests for you to learn lots, to be entertained, to laugh, to have a good wine, to sip along with us. It's going to be a great year. I am excited and nervous and a bit afraid about committing openly to goals that I've held secret for a long time and not wanted to put out there in public for fear of saying, you know, getting called on, you didn't do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to write this third book, at least get it to manuscript stage for Random House to review. <sighs> So that's what's, that's what's happening. That's what's going to happen. Anyway. Um, <laughs> okay. Screw your dry night, says Lise. Lots of hearts and happy faces. And oh, I just love this community. I really, really, really do. Okay. Um, how about a signed copy of the third book? Yeah, sure, Jim. Jim's still fishing around for the winner, for the, uh, the title of that book. Marissa D'Souza has just joined us. Marissa? You're coming in at the tail end, but that's not a problem. You can watch the replay. And anybody who is watching this replay, you can still qualify for the sign book that I'll announce on January 27th. Okay, so still share, comment, etc. Lori loves her Prosecco, but drinks a lot of Cremon. All right, guys. So I raise my glass, my empty glass to you. And I will see you on January 27th with chef and wine expert Stephanie Pichet. Uh, it's going to be lots of fun. Lots of wine travel-based stories. I can't wait to hear from her, to chat with her, and to share that with you. All right. Says, oh, Alan, we love you whether or not, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I'm going to sign out before, you, before I get really weepy. Uh, Elaine says, you've inspired me to get back to my writing, at least for my wine adventures. You bet. Get right back there, Elaine. If that's what inspires you, do it. Get to work, says Lise. Okay, okay. All right. Gotta go now. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening, and I will see you on January 27th. Take care. Bye, guys.